Voting isn't just going to the polls anymore on election day. Options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote is a tool created by Democracy Works, and it breaks down the options your state offers by forecasting a ballot, empowering you to decide where and when to vote. Democracy works best when we all vote, but misinformation and confusion about election procedures have resulted in low voter turnout. How to Vote takes the guesswork out of the voting process. It is easy to use and helps folks from all over the country overcome many of the process barriers to voting. It is committed to helping you vote no matter what. You can use the How to Vote tool to sign up for election reminders, see what's on your ballot, get step-by-step assistance requesting your mail ballot, explore your options for returning your mail-in ballot, check your voter registration status, and find your local polling site and make sure that you have an appropriate ID to bring with you. Decide when and where you'll vote this year at howto.vote. Hello and welcome to the formal review. Today, we will be looking at the 2018 film, If Beale Street Could Talk. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the review. Hey everybody and welcome back to the formal review. This is episode 33. Now before I get into today's episode, I do want to remind you that there may be some spoilers but I will do my best to keep the review fairly vague so that not to ruin the movie for you. But like, if you really want to get the full understanding of what I'm trying to say with the film, I definitely recommend going to see it first and then come back and listen to what I have to say. But if you don't care about that, keep listening. So if Bill Street Could Talk is a romantic drama film directed and written by Barry Jenkins, and it is based on James Baldwin's novel of the same name. It stars Kiki Lane, Stephen James, Coleman Domingo, Fiona Paris, Michael Beach, Dave Franco, Diego Luna, Pedro Pascal, Ed Skirin, Brian Tyree Henry, and Regina King. The film follows a young African woman named Tish, played by Lane, who's trying with her family's support to clear her wrongly charged lover, Fawny, played by James of a crime and prove his innocence before the birth of their child. Now, that's really the plot of the story. What's really interesting about how this story is told is the non-linear aspects of it, which worked really well, and I really liked how Barry Jenkins did this. Now, I don't know if this is actually due to the novel of the same name because I haven't read it, but have each scene important to the overall plot. Some of the cinematography in this is really good. I, I really appreciate Barry Jenkins' directional view for this film and I think this is a really interesting story even though it takes place in the 70s in Harlem the overall story actually has a lot of current aspects as well and honestly the overall story is applied to today's world and that's really what makes this film have a very very strong message is how it applies to both the past and present and even though it is an unfortunate situation and shouldn't be the case it unfortunately still happens even now 40 years later and some people may say that this film does move fairly slowly but i loved it because it really got you into knowing these characters and the music scored by nicholas bretto i thought was a extreme aspect of that and I love that and it kept each scene almost as intense as the following scene. The music keeps the film very engaging for the entirety of the film. And this film starts off very strong. It sets the stage of what this film is about. Tish is going into a prison and finds her lover behind bars. There's a strong line is that I hope no one ever has to look at anybody that they love through glass. And it's so interesting in this how strong of a love that these two people have for each other. And they are legitimately within inches of each other, but because of glass, they can't touch each other. For a love story, that's a very powerful image to have. And it really gains a sympathy toward these characters and as the film plays out this love is grown stronger and stronger but in the back of your mind you remember that Fani is still in prison and that's what makes this film fairly strong again going off of the non-linear aspect the way that it keeps Fani as a character himself 
he's not kept behind bars the entire film. That's really what makes his character extremely engaging and understanding where he comes from, understanding his beliefs, understanding the situation that put him in prison, and that allows his character not only to just be this person behind bars, he is an actual person. And that's what strengthens the whole overall message because when somebody is put into prison wrongly, a lot of people will look at them as criminals almost for the rest of their entire life and that's not the situation. This is just a person. Barry Jenkins really pushes this message throughout the entire film which is really well done because the audience sees the evolution of Fonny and Trish over the course of the film. James and Lane do a very good job playing these two characters that are in love. You really feel the chemistry between them and the love between these two characters and that's thanks to the wonderful writing of this film. Even though they play their characters very well, the strongest actor in this film is Regina King. She has two extremely significant scenes. Both of these scenes really push her to act extremely well and she does amazing. Those two scenes are honestly for me worth the price of admission. Her character is also an extremely wrong character in that she shows how much a mother really can mean and how much parents really try to do what's best for their children. In this film she's willing to travel to Puerto Rico for her daughter. And this family doesn't have a lot of money. There's a lot of fees especially with sending investigators, dealing with the lawyer. There's a lot of money being thrown around here that they don't really have. So to do this and try to fight for her daughter and her partner I think is such a strong powerful woman character. And this is not to say that any other actor in this film is anything less good. All of these people were cast extremely well. And even Dave Franco does a good job. The scene that he's really involved with, Fadi and Trish, really is a scene that really shows what love is. Really the only flaw that I personally can see people getting mad about it is the film is slow. But like I said, that didn't bother me at all because of how strong these characters were built. And for me, that's what makes a great film is a strong character film and getting me to care about these characters. I can see also some people getting mad about how this story was told but like I said already that each piece is needed to create this picture in a way that threads the story of love, injustice, and the overall message of the film. Why I like this film so much is really because of how it ended. Because it's an unfortunate situation, but it leaves you on a hopeful note. Trying to make the future better. Yeah, we have to understand that as this film shows that there's not much differences between how African American men and women were treated in the past, but it's how do we make it better for the future. And I really respected that message and I think that the story is one of the strongest stories that I've seen in a really long time. And honestly, that's why I would rate this film a 5 out of 5 bow ties. Now, I know this is one of the first 5s I've ever given out on this, but I had no problems with it. Let me know what you thought of the film. Hit me up on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The URL's all the same. It's at the formal review. I also, I'm also on Box Office Buzz. Check out the website for all media news when it comes to movies, video games, music. I do want to thank everyone once again for tuning in. I really appreciate everybody who listens, what I have to think about movies. I do this for everyone listening, and I see the numbers, and I really appreciate you all tuning in. And for those who have had support on a financial basis, I definitely appreciate that, and it definitely makes, again, these episodes really possible. So if you haven't started supporting, please go to anchor.com forward slash the dash formal dash review and click support this podcast any contribution is appreciated now so you never miss an episode please subscribe on google podcast stitcher spotify itunes whatever floats your boat and please leave a review because i'm always willing to improve and grow and i'll check them out as with every episode there is music in the background i do not own the rights to this music i do include it because i do think it's an important part of film especially films like this there is a lot that can be taken from the music the music in the background in this episode is from the If Beale Street Could Talk original motion picture scores, composed by Nicholas Bertel, released by Lakeshore Records on November 9th, 2018. Until next time, I'll see you at the movies. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Formal Review. We hope you'll join us again.